So our topic uh, for today is, you know, what's next uh, for Bitcoin Cash? And, um, you know, as everybody knows, Bitcoin Cash is, um, you know, the, the original uh, Bitcoin, the, the, you know, the closest thing to, um, you know, the, the Bitcoin described in the white paper, on-chain, uh, big blocks, small fees, uh, decentralized, open to everyone. Um, we've had a couple of uh, interesting uh, years uh, with Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Cash is getting a lot of stuff done this year. We've got Smart BCH. Uh, you know, you've got some upgrades coming to mainnet uh, early uh, next year, and uh, we've got a lot of new projects. We've had 10,000 uh, BCH in uh, Flipstarter funding. Um, so, you know, I think my question uh, is, you know, what's next for BCH? Uh, what would you like to see? Uh, for BCH. Uh, anybody want to jump in? I can jump in if everyone else is shy. Yeah, go right ahead. Awesome. Yeah, so I followed the launch of smart uh, Bitcoin cash chain from the from day one. So I think it's great to have our own DeFi chain. Mm-hmm. Also, I seen uh, an NFT platform. It's coming soon, which it's a great step forward we, and will attract a lot of new people and NFT enthusiasts. And uh, I think the last one which I seen was the BCH pod, which will uh, check projects and launch them through the pod. So we'll reduce the chance for rug pulls and scam, which again, it's a great idea and it's enhancing the ecosystem. So, yeah, so tell us about that. I, I, I think I saw that. You said it's called BCH Pad, something like that? Yeah. So basically, I saw something about that, but what is it? So ba- do you know the Binance Launchpad? Where they I just, have heard of it. Yeah, so basically like new projects, like Binance had the Lazio token this today, actually. So basically they will share, it's like an initial coin offering, but it's already verified. So for a project to join the pod and uh, get money from people, they will need to do a know, know your customer, which reduces the chances for a scam. So basically, they've done the same thing on, on the smart chain. So, uh-huh. so now they can list projects. People can join in for the coin offering, get the coins at a set price, more like a pre-sale. And they have guaranteed that the project is safe. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, I got some. I, they... I, I missed the pre-sale, but I managed to get some from a secondary market. Huh. How, how do they uh, guarantee that, you know, that it's safe? Uh, it's nothing is 100% safe, but I think they will, every project who applies for it, We'll need to fill a form with details and know your customer. So basically, they they know who it is. I see. I see. Um, interesting. Interesting. So um, yes, yeah, so we've got a bunch of people uh, in the uh, in the space. Um, uh, Paul Club One BCH, right? We've got Crackers NFT artist Emmanuel of um, EPCH, B. Cashy, Sherry, Omar, Ben, um, Purely Peer, Chris Troutner. We've got a lot of people here. Um, so I just want to put this question out uh, to people. Where do, What do you want to see from Bitcoin Cash? Uh, what do you want to see happen in Bitcoin Cash over the next, you know, say in 2022? I seen it. It's more about visibility, and uh, I think we can move aside this conflict with against Bitcoin. You know, because most of the things are like we are the real one. They will be like, no, you're not, and it's just generating like a lot of hate and trolling around. So I think if we just focus on these great projects which are constantly being launched, and just focusing on that and 
being more visible for new people, I think that would be beneficial. Yeah, I think those are solid ideas. Well, for me, I think, to be honest, um, the whole market for NFTs is not perfect, pushed enough on, BC, on uh, Bitcoin Cash. I mean, you look at compared to OpenSea, where you have Ethereum, you look at WAX, and the WAX and Ethereum now are there, now putting a bridge in place that you can buy with WAX, you can buy on OpenSea, where we have Jungle, which is now gone to obscurity. Where you, you go onto Twitter and you look at NFT, WAX will come up, OpenSea, Rarible, you won't see Jungle. And I don't think that's right. But I also think that there needs to be more games put onto BCH. If you look at Alien Worlds on Wax, you have so many on Binance now or Binance Linked. I think it needs to be more. I know on the retail side where a lot of shops now are accepting it in South American countries, not really as much in Europe. I think it needs to be a bigger push on promoting the whole project itself as a whole, as in from the basics to the more kind of the eagerty of console ga- or games to be used on it. I know we're getting a few kind of swap coins on it now and you have smart BCH, but it's not broadcasted enough. Yeah, uh, I think you're right on there. There's... Well, I was talking to George not too long ago about um, having more memes, more artwork and more interaction with imaging because it language is good but memes and images um, have a deeper effect on the psyche or the psyche. So I think um, and I've seen the with eCash um, some people joining in and having a play with that and it spreads around the internet and also you know, other members can use that as content on Twitter and, and other channels as well with the artwork. Yeah, I think you touched on a good point there, Sherry. Um, you, you know, I've been doing a lot of looking into uh, the SLP tokens and sort of, I, I was there at the very beginning and I, I some people I think in the space, in this in this Bitcoin cash space think that the, the tokens are kind of sunsetting with the with the creation of smart BCH, but <clears throat> looking back at, um, you know, so the, the purpose of this, this talk is what's next for Bitcoin cash. I think there's lessons to be learned by looking at the past. And we had outrageous hockey stick growth with the creation of the spice token because it was fun. Mm-hmm. And o- mm-hmm. over and over and over, I've seen the, the sort of spikes in growth in Bitcoin cash when someone discovers something new that's fun. Um, and I think the spice token was a perfect example of that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm personally working really hard to, to still revive the SLP token ecosystem. Um, it's got some infrastructure issues that need to be addressed. And, uh, and I'm also looking forward to, uh, smart BCH and I'm looking forward to the interaction between SLP tokens and the smart BCH token ecosystem. Um, but, but, you know, beyond, be, above all that technical stuff, uh, I think what we need to keep in mind in terms of if we want to grow this space, in terms of what's next for Bitcoin Cash, we need to make it fun. We need to find ways to make, just have fun, to have, have people have fun. I totally agree. And I believe it needs to be interactive to some degree. Um, and I think that's where the art and images and the playfulness, like look at Doge. Doge is a dog and then you look at bitcoin it's the promise of the golden coin um the promise of riches bitcoin cash we're green it's a nice logo but we don't have um anything more than that and i think images and memes in our area are quite limited when i look for stuff um like i've been using the guy with the hood and and making up you know, reconceptualizing that was as Bitcoin cash under the hood. You know, you can play with that and, and change it to whatever you like, depending on how creative you get with the words. But you get out an image and it takes, or, or images, you know, multiple ones that people can play with. And I think we're missing out on the art sort of stuff. We're missing out uh, reaching people on that level. 
I'd be interested to hear um, if anybody on this uh, conversation has had experience with the NFTs. I'm I'm starting to really take a second close look at that. Um, I just spent last night. My girlfriend is a, is an artist, a fine artist, and um, so we just took a look at OpenSea yesterday, and sort of uh, was really surprised by the limitations there. Um, and I think that there's you know because i'm i have one foot in the technical side of things like i think that bitcoin cash has a lot to offer the nft space um so you're just looking looking at different different ways that nfts have been created but yeah i think you're right on sherry that we need to we haven't as a as a community as a as a community as a as a as an ecosystem we we haven't really done a very good job of capitalizing on the art and nft um phenomenon that has occurred over this last year well, that's what I said, Chris. I said that, that you need to relaunch Jungle, they need to promote it more. Like, you do have NFTs on BCH, but if you go onto Twitter, you put NFT, you won't get Jungle up. You need to be promoted more. Like, you need to, if you go and approach these big artists on Likes of Wax or OpenSea and said to them, like, this is the capabilities of what you could do on this, or this is kind of what we want to come in, you probably might grab one or two artists. And getting one or two big artists that are known within that space will bring more artists in or will expand them. Because at the moment, you'll see a lot of wax artists are now jumping into open sea. So if you can get that to the point where they want to come into BCH, and then you're attracting a whole new customer or a whole new people to inquire about BCH and look I, into I it. Think, I think it also needs to appeal to everyone, not just big players. Like everyone can jump in and play. And it oh, doesn't no, no, I don't mean like that. Sorry. I don't mean yeah. like that. I mean, is if you bring in one or two big artists that will bring in their own crowd, who then will look into more artists who are on the BCH. That's the way I yeah. look at it, as in make the community bigger, more so than just bringing artists in that our community will just gather around, where you bring an artist in that has his own community. <laughs> He'll bring his community back into BCH where you're expanding. If I, yeah, if I may Bye. just jump in quickly here. Um, I've I've done quite a few work um, with uh, with clients who want to release their NFTs on these kinds of blockchains. And the unfortunate truth right now is that, quite honestly, most of these projects only care because the Ethereum market cap is so high. Like they will, they will be actually be willing to go through the thousands of dollars of Ethereum gas fees and whatnot, versus you know rather than go to some other platforms like let's say Polygon or Cardano or anything else. So there there is the, you know the the kind of like the the pink elephant in the room where like yes all these NFTs and all that stuff is really cool, but at the end of the day what what's attracting people to you know all this stuff is quite honestly money. You know, like you're able to sell these tokens, you're able to sell these artwork for you know tens of thousands of dollars. You know, that's something that we need to look at into first, I think. Yeah, good point. And there's also infrastructure considerations. You know, um, there's the marketing side, but then there's the actual. Uh, you know, can can we del execute on on anything that we market to say an artist to bring them, attract them? But uh, very good point, Jerry. So actually, that's uh, that's another thing, Chris. Um, the infrastructure for a lot of these NFT projects, um, especially on Ethereum like OpenSea, uh, they actually require indexers. I don't know if you know this, but in the smart contract, there's no way to actually like find out who owns what. You need to have like third-party indexers, just like we're, we're doing in BCH with like the SLPDB and stuff. So infrastructure all the way through, it's it's impo almost impossible to like get that properly set up at this point. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. Because I last night was the first time I've gone to OpenSea and then actually looked at some of the contract addresses in the block on the block explorer. And it was incredibly confusing. It took me a while to just understand what was I still don't fully understand what was happening. But yes, yeah, I think you're right on there with the indexers. Uh, all of these all of these new things, every time we discover, oh, we can do, you know, feature X with a blockchain, it usually requires an indexer. And that's an infrastructure thing. Yeah, and the indexer for like uh, the graph, like literally on their site, they say, hey, make sure you have enough ethers to cover two months worth of querying gas costs. So, you know, I know we, we've been talking about, you know, smart BCH and whatnot, but 
if if it's just going to be like a direct port from the all the Ethereum smart contracts, you know, would would that mean the smart BCH side will also need their own indexers for a lot of these things, right? Yeah. So so smart. So you're saying smart BCH is no panacea to some of these um, infrastructure issues that that we've already faced in the past. Yeah. I mean, like it. Obviously, you can code the smart contracts to to do that so that you don't need an indexer. But again, like one of the main reasons why all these blockchain, all these Ethereum based blockchains have these indexers, like the graph, is because of like, you know, their transaction fees and costs and like that. So I don't know how it's going to work out in the BCH space with smart BCH, but at the very least, like this is the trend that we're seeing right now with other blockchains. I think you're right on. There is definitely an issue with infrastructure. Um, you know, I have devs and, and you know builders come to me all the time and say, you know, this infrastructure is a bit weak. This is not working right. You know, this goes down. We need this. We need that. And also, you know, like people have mentioned, other chains like that. You know, people are in it for the money. And of you know, of course, of course they are. And you compare BCH to say a chain like Solana or uh, the Terra ecosystem, or, you know, any other one, and they've, or Avalanche even, and they've set up huge, huge funds. And even though, you know, BCH has raised a lot of money uh, for projects over the last uh, year or so, it's still a very small amount of money uh, compared to uh, what some of these other projects are putting out there. Um, so I think, I just wonder if we might need a strategy, still a very small amount of money uh, compared to uh, what some of these other projects are putting out there. Um, so I think, I just wonder if we might need a strategy that doesn't, that, you know, kind of like a David versus Goliath thing, right? Like all these other guys, and at least in terms of their funding, they're a bit Goliath-ish, you know? So I just wonder how, how if anybody has ideas how we, get, we deal with that. Yeah, I, I'm all ears. I'm this is this is something that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, I, um, you know, I'm I, I, I've been on the uh, the RBTC Reddit uh, thread recently. Someone was asking about growth and I was just pointing out that our culture. Did Chris cut off for anyone else? Yes, he cut off for me too. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's off. Um, I guess I could throw in my two cents here. Um, yeah, so I, I've been trying to run up the the SLP DB with uh, the BCHD clients for the past uh, few weeks, and you know, one thing that I noticed is that. Even though like we have all these tools out there, right? Like like for example, the 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 explorers, all that stuff, it's it's still very, very difficult for like a completely new person to just come into the space, try to get all this stuff set up and then start doing things, right? Um so you know, maybe just from a developer's perspective, it may be helpful to, you know, have a lot more like super easy one-on-one guides to just help people be onboarded. Because I know, like, uh, if you look up on uh, medium.com or any sort of like these article pages and you look up anything blockchain developer related, it's going to be like, you know, here's already the code. You just walk through it step by step by step. And quite literally, like, a very, very junior developer could easily follow it through. Um, I guess, like, that experience is not exactly the same, or it's like a lot more difficult in uh, the Bitcoin Cash ecosystem. I'd have to second that. I mean, I'm the least technical person likely in this room. And if I can't understand it, um, then it's a problem. And even with um, Smart BCH, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what it is exactly, how it benefits me in any way or how it even benefits the ecosystem. Everything's very ambiguous and it's not spelled out very well. Um, and it's great for people with know-how, but for ordinary people in the space, it's very confusing. And I guess we need to, you know, reach beyond just 
people who are very OGs and people who are very proficient. Well, as it, as it turns out, <laughs> even people who are uh, serious, experienced developers, uh, the, the cost of entry to, uh, to BCH is, is really, really high. Um, my, my development organization, we were experienced in Ethereum and Stellar. And last year around May, uh, you know, we looked and saw that, okay, BCH looks like the thing for us. But um, you couldn't set up. Um, a private node for, you know, which is standard development uh, best case practices, uh, you know, standard operating procedures to have a test node that's isolated from everything else so that you can do repeatable sy systems. And in, in BCH, it's called a reg test node. Well, almost all the tools were broken for reg test support. It just weren't there. So mm -hmm. we went and spent uh, four months building, um, we call it BCH toolkit, which is a set of Dockerized containers of all the standard tools. And we added SOP support and we added um, reg test support. So now you can, with three commands, if you're, you know, if you're a development group, you can get set and have an operational BCH environment um, in, in a few minutes. But this took us several months to to build out. And this is one of the things we're supporting. So yeah, what what you're saying, you know, what, what's being sold as far as you know now getting the non-technical people to be able to do practical things on top of BCH, you know, that that is the next step. But um, but even the technical side, that that journey. Um, you know, we, we're just now making like significant headway to that. So how how do we get more people like yourself to come in and build on BCH and and make it better? <clears throat> well, th this is th this is uh, what I believe is the the non. I, I, I've been writing since May this non technical manifesto, and I keep on getting ready to publish it, and I think of something else to do differently. <laughs> but okay. it's it's all it's all about um, it's. You know, if, if you're a development organization and you're saying, okay, we want to get into crypto, you're going to look around and you're going to see it's not just the features, the functional features, but it's also the qualitative things. Like, I know this thing is going to run and then it's going to perform. I know this. I know the uh, um, the ecosystem is going to stay operational for me. It's highly reliable. And that is what Bitcoin has. And Ethereum has that to some extent as well. Um we just haven't uh, focused on that on the BCH side. Um, the last time, you know, around April or whenever it was when the NFTs all took off, um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of NFTs uh, for, for utility, um, but it's very clear that none of that stuff had ever been tested to any capacity. And people had bought their NFTs and they all got locked up because the SLPDB system was, um, well, well, the way the SOP stuff looks up was, was uh, really just incredibly slow once there was any transactions on it at all. And so we, ha we have to invest strongly in infrastructure. And I believe the people who have to do that are the people who are building legitimate applications on top of it first. We, I have a, a live multi-way streaming system where we're doing like live concert events and stuff. And so we're selling tickets. Our tickets are actually operated behind the scenes. The customers don't know it yet. They're actually SLP NFTs. Um, and so we've invested in improving the SLP uh, capacity ourselves. We're looking at improving some stuff um, for SLPDB to make it more uh, uh, performant. Uh, Chris Troutner's uh, got some ideas on redoing SLPDB. And so, you know, hopefully, hopefully that's going to make some progress soon. Okay. Yeah, Ben, I just want to underscore what you said in terms of reliability. I think that that is a, um, an under-marketed feature of Bitcoin Cash. And, and this has been become more apparent to me recently working with Shapeshift DAO, who, um, you know, their, their goal is to integrate as many blockchains as possible. And so I've talked to their engineers and they've expressed to me how difficult and unreliable some of these other blockchains are. And uh, leaving SLPDB uh, to the side for the moment, um, the full node and Fulcrum, our, our indexer for address balances and UTXOs, are incredibly reliable. You set them up and they run for months and you, you don't have to think about them. And, and no other, you know, very few other blockchains have that level of reliability. Um, so, I mean, if, if we could come together as a community and, and really focus on marketing that reliability and increasing the reliability in other areas of infrastructure like SLP uh, and smart BCH, then I think, you know, 
the fruits of that would bear out over time. Yeah, I think like one of the uh, one of the issues with that again, it has to circle back to you know some sort of like a financial incentive to to do so, um, because again, like if you can just get like a bigger um, market cap with like you know let's say Ethereum or something like that, you're gonna go with Ethereum because it's gonna make you more money. But on like conversely, I have seen like um, like a lot of the, the just like the basic most basic features. Um, from the uh, especially the uh, NFTs on Ethereum, where let's say you know you have a company and if someone buys something from you, you want to give them some sort of like an NFT token, and then let's say you have a website. If you have that NFT, it'll redirect you to you know let's say a premium or a members only section, right? Well, right now in Ethereum, like that stuff is completely broken in that you need to use the indexer services like the graph to do. But if we're able to, you know, I think we are able to do so right now with the existing infrastructure on Bitcoin Cash. So I think it may be worthwhile to see, like, and just do a bit of research into what some of the other blockchains are doing. Uh, you know, obviously, what kind of advantages they're providing, but also where where exactly is the the drawback, right? Um, obviously, fees are one, but I, I really feel like the the indexer part is something that's really not uh, heavily looked at in terms of um, just overall um, infrastructure for, uh, support, not just for BCH, but for like all these blockchains altogether. So I have a question. One thing um, that came up earlier is right education, you know, taking because we, we have some serious uh, tech brain power. Uh, in the space and you know some of some of them are you know in this call actually too um, but how, how do we take that right and how do we make it a little more accessible you know like how do how do we let's say you know we get some writers together some artists and you know how do we how do we interface that you know how do we how do we get the communicators and the tech people together in order to to make this kind of change that we're talking about happen. But is there a YouTube channel? I know it's a very- Together in order to, to make this kind of change that we're talking about happen. But is there a YouTube channel? I know that's a very basic question to ask, but is there a YouTube channel for developers to spread the word about BCH or ask, get the community to get involved? Is there a standalone BCH basic channel on YouTube? I think Chris Chris Troutner has a channel, but uh, other than that, it's very very limited. I think well, even I this channel, yeah. I interview a I lot think... of people. There are a whole bunch of channels. Yeah, but there's not like one official channel. There's also the Cash Discussions channel, where devs uh, sometimes have like video stream video calls. So, uh, you know, so I, I uh, founded the Permissionless Software Foundation, and we are heavily focused on Bitcoin Cash, but, but not exclusively. We, we're a cross-blockchain organization. We, we focus on three uh, in particular, and we also focus on JavaScript, but um, uh, that, that's not really the point. I mean, so we do have a, a way, uh, we do produce videos, and we do try to onboard developers into the space. Um, and what I've learned from that experience is that uh, there, so, you know, George, I love the videos that you put out. They're, they're high level and they're, um, you know, they're friendly and they're non-technical and we need more of that. We also need more technical videos for the technically minded people. And we need to find a way to bridge the two extremes. And I think that's, that's where we're really lacking. Um, there's no way to hide the, the technical difficulty of, of uh, blockchain. And, and we shouldn't try to do that. Uh, but what we need is to just create a lot of opportunities for all the different people from their different perspectives and, and a, a way to onboard them. So if they're not technical, you know, I would forward them onto like George's, George's videos. If they are technical, you know, the Permissionless Software Foundation would be a good avenue. If they're sort of semi-technical, like they can build a web page, but they, they don't know how to do like backend infrastructure. Uh, I'm really trying to, you know, that's sort of one of our, our targets. We're trying to cater that and, and build an onboarding process for people that uh, 
you know, when you start talking about technical people, you can start to categorize them into the different areas of expertise. And I think that's the approach that needs to needs to happen. That's that's the approach I'm taking. Hey, everyone. My, my name is Ryan. I'm sorry I came a little bit late. Uh, I didn't want to interject in the conversation too early. You guys are having a good conversation. Uh, I did tell George I you know wanted to hop on the call. I'm not sure if anyone here is familiar with me, but I run a, uh, a YouTube channel about uh, Bitcoin Cash and application. And I've started running a lot of events down here in South Florida. I'm more on the entrepreneuring side and, uh, and promoting it. Like our business, we offer it for payroll. Uh, we pay vendors. And, uh, and we host meetups to, to bring the adoption. And, and I run a YouTube channel that's it's not as technical, but whatever resources are here that like to collab, and my audience is probably less technical, and I may be underserving some people that have technical interests, I'd be uh, very interested to, uh, to collaborate. Can I ask, because I knew I actually talk about advertising stuff on like the Brave browser as an ad where you're not just going to reach out to people who are interested in BCH, but more people that actually earn crypto. So you look at Brave, you get most, I get about six, maybe five to six ads per hour. And some of the ads are pure garbage. But I always looked them anyway. But there was recently, if I can't think of his name, I know he's fairly big in YouTube and crypto. I can't think, I know uh, Joe, uh, Paul might actually know his name. But uh, he had a video on that. And I don't know, we may might have gathered more people into his environment from doing it. But as you said, it's not advertised enough and it needs to get more advertised in. I think we lost him. <laughs> I think we lost him to the kids. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing, one thing I I kind of wanted to add to to Chris's point, um, is that you know like, so I I got into the uh, the the Ethereum space basically when it first launched, and you know at that time I wasn't doing anything like programming, technical development experience like related. It was just mostly me trading back and forth. Um, but what I found really really helpful was. You know, especially for non-developers to, you know, get into the space easily, it's really helpful to have these, you know, like super dummy, you just need to know what a computer is and how to go on Google, that kind of uh, knowledge, to then be able to build anything simple, right? Um, like initially, they started out with tokens, but nowadays, I believe there are even like Udemy courses where you can pay like 20 bucks to learn how to make one of these NFT marketplaces out. So... I definitely do believe that, you know, like if we can make these technical guides as dumbed down as possible so that even, you know, like let's say my grandma would be able to to do something with it, right? Maybe not to that extent, but that's the kind of like um, like level of um, understanding that I think we should be thriving for. What about... So basically, also... Adobe's guide... Go ahead, Craig. Sorry, my child's got me. My child got stuck on the table there, so he's kind of this scream, so I have to come off there for a second. So what Jerry's basically saying is basically doing one of those books, like the like the book the dummies guide to on how to do stuff, which I actually think that'd be a brilliant idea. Genuinely it'd be a brilliant idea to have a dummies guide because as much as I, what I know about crypto is probably one percent. As I love to be able to get into development and that kind of stuff, but I have nowhere, don't even know where to start to look at because there's so many things out there saying, "Oh, you can do this, you can do that," but then uh, you go look at it and you jump up ten steps in, going, "Oh, well, you should not have to do all this by this stage," and you're kind of like, "No," and then you just give up and walk away. That's my personal opinion, but um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here. I, I think the phenomenon, the uh, the youth base, it's really a, a cultural phenomenon. Um, I think everyone here probably, I'm not sure if you have, saw the Swiss Beats uh, interview where it turns out he's a, a big Bitcoin Cash supporter. Um, has anyone, I actually I tried to reach out to him too, like, you know, getting him, you know, would you come on the channel, do this X, Y, Z? Is there any kind of like bigger influencers, especially artists in the NFT world that, that could be reached out to? And, and anyone in this chat here, I know George is trying to reach out to Kim.com. Some of these bigger players that could really, you know, have a bigger network effect. 
on what we have to market. Um, is there any big communication that way? We, we just had Mark Cuban mention Bitcoin Cash in a conversation too. It, who else can we reach big that can it, you know extend the brand? Well, the problem there is that if we were able to find these types of people that could I influence it, uh, you know, a lot of that is around tokens, NFTs and fungible tokens, and that's sort of where our infrastructure falls short. So even if we were able to bring an influencer on, we we're not our infrastructure isn't really in a place where we can reliably deliver on on those things now. In, for the cash use case, our infrastructure is rock solid. So if, if we can find an influencer that, uh, you know, uh, just wants to focus on the cash use case, we're ready for that. Um, just real quick, though, to return to what Jerry and Crackers were saying about sort of the a four dummies book. Um, when I was working at Bitcoin.com with uh, Gabriel Cardona, he forked Andreas Antonopoulos' uh, Mastering Bitcoin book and made Mastering Bitcoin Cash. And that's available at fullstack.cash under the documentation page. Um, and so, you know, that, that's one of our main tools for onboarding technical people into the space uh, because so many people have come to the Bitcoin space and now the Ethereum space and now the Lightning space because of Andreas Antonopoulos' mastering books. And so we, we do have a copy of that or a version of that for Bitcoin Cash. It could use a little love, um, but that is a great starting point. I think another question that's important to, to consider is, you know, so we want to reach out to big name people, right? Uh, but what, what, what can we do to create a groundswell that is going to kind of more organically or virally grab the attention uh, of, of these people, right? Like, uh, and I think that's where we can come back around to things like art, uh, attracting artists. I do a lot of outreach to uh, YouTubers. You know, uh, in the in the BCH marketing group on Telegram, we we're bouncing around the idea of a an art competition. Because um, I, I, you know, the whole tech thing is so important. It's so valuable. But I, we should also think about the, the you know the more the other element, the artistic. You know? uh, did everyone? I, I did anyone ever consider a game on Bitcoin Cash? Maybe an NFT. That yeah, an NFT power game or something you see, like Alien Worlds, Splinterland, and all these ones. So, yeah, so I don't know if you follow these guys, but uh, The Sphere um, by uh, John, uh, Joey Wong. Um, it's basically like a card game uh, where it's like aliens, AVP plus humans, I guess. Um, yeah, and it's know, uh, yeah, and I know uh, Purely Pure uh, is also one of these like kind of like geolocation based games. Um, so definitely, like there are people working on those games, and I don't know if uh, Purely Pure wants to speak on that. Um, or anything like that but, um, yeah, thank you, Jerry. I, I, I yeah, can go ahead. Yeah, this is Eric from Purely Pure. Um, I'm the architect. Uh, I actually worked with Jerry and Chris in January during a hackathon on a concept on a proof of concept for for the peer peer the idea there uh i actually worked with jerry and chris in january during a hackathon on a concept on a proof of concept for for the peer peer the idea there is that we would bridge uh the nft world uh with the uh money case uh, the use case so that you could have anyone who owns bch become an immediate advertising or micro advertising agency so for about 10 cents you would be able to uh, do a cash drop around a location that you choose on a map and that cash drop also then becomes an NFT the moment someone collects it. And, uh, you know, uh, it goes back to also the development hurdles because, of course, during the hackathon, during a week, you do compromises, you kind of build it in a centralized way. Now, uh, with a new team, I'm working with uh, Joe Amar, um, who also does uh, SLP infrastructure, Spice Token and uh, Paytaka. And uh, we've had uh, constantly little, you know, roadblocks and issues. Most recently, when we found out that when we are doing smart contracts on the main chain and we are doing covenants, uh, the script size is much lower than the limit uh, 520 or whatever it's supposed to be the bytes. 
um, it's only like 361. So we had to then go back to the drawing board and redesign all of the, the smart contracts and, and do some gymnastics. I know that many of these issues uh, will be improving in May, which is great. Uh, but uh, uh, openly, we have to kind of look at our ecosystem and say the documentation is not really uh, perfect because, you know, we are following cache script and cache script says there is a certain number, there is a certain limit, we design it, we test it, and then during testing we find out it's failing. And the reason why it's failing is because once you have a non-standard script that uh, includes covenant, um, then, then you have further limitations that nobody ever, you know, publicly talked about. But uh, back to the back to the whole concept and the game. Um, the idea there is uh, we can grow our user base exponentially. So for say fifty cents, you drop five cash drops around a location. You know, if you have a store, you just drop it around maybe five ten minute walking radius around you. Um, if you are a podcast uh, host, you could just drop it around um, a city center. You could set the radius larger. And then on your podcast, you can tell people, hey, I just dropped a, a few cents or a few dollars. It could even be more if you decide to. And that way, you, you onboard more people. You get uh, more BCH to more people. And at the same time, the collectors are then receiving uh, NFTs that uh, we plan later on to have uh, a game around it. And of course, you know, for the time being, because of all these other hurdles and, and things, um, we haven't even done the game engine yet we have the game design we know what the game is going to be but the idea is that uh if you have a local mom and pop store i'm not sure someone seems to be walking there's a little bit of interference if i could ask someone to mute if that could help uh george i think it might be you oops oops no worries thank you thank you george um, I just wanted to say that big idea is uh, you cannot expect someone in the developing world uh, who has a, a little, little you know, kiosk at the side of a road to um, go into, um, I would say, very complex NFT issuance and, as we were saying, indexers for their own NFTs, right? You have to find a, some way to simplify it um, to just like, Apple did with iPhones and very simple in a simple way gave people to use uh, handheld devices. You know, there was Palm OS before for, for, for people to use organizers and everything. There were other phones uh, that tried to do touch screens, but uh, Apple really did it well. And so in a similar way, we are looking at it that, well, if we build this whole kind of uh, decentralized way of someone just creating their own micro advertisement, and at the same time, they are also getting NFTs that are linked back to their store. Then they jump over all of these hoops and the hurdles to with the infrastructure, right? Because you would be able to just say, hey, here's a little form. I click here. I click there. This is the name of my store. Um, this is the location of my store. It uh, immediately becomes a part of a, a map, a part of the database. And boom, you have 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, whatever. Uh, cash drops around it and then the local people pick them up and they have nfts and those nfts can be used then in a game and at the same time those nfts have a link back to to the store uh, or back to the uh listing so that's one of the things that is in the works it's not released yet we are hoping to be out last month uh it's it's getting a little pushed but uh um hopefully within the next few weeks um will we out on google play Dirty, can I just say that sounds exactly like kind of Wii Nano, which is a brilliant concept. They don't use, so basically what they do is I can go out and create a do drop of, say, one Nano, and I can say each person claim 0 0.01 off it each day, every 24 hours. Well, you are, I like the, the, the way you're saying it is basically that if I drop it, I collect, they collect an NFT off it. But it's more, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I think we do, I don't know. But it is quite similar to what we now actually have out at the moment, via the NFT. Uh, could be to be familiar. To be honest, I'm not really familiar with uh, the Nano concept that you mentioned. I, I don't know if it was Nano or Dash or someone else had it. I know that there were some uh, limitations in terms of geo spoofing. Um, there are some other limitations that we are trying to overcome 
Um, we are also building this as a, a, a smart contract on main chain. So, you know, if you, if you send a dollar to, to pay to script hash, that automatically gets uh, split into, um, let's say, 10 cash drops, 10 cents each. And uh, you know that there is not really a central entity that can pull a plug on it, um, that, that it's really built on the main chain. Um, and so I don't know uh, about all of these other blockchains, how they are using these tools, because it's relatively easy to, to do. I mean, within a week uh, with Chris and, and Jerry um, and uh, um, Daniel, uh, we built, you know, during the hackathon a prototype, but it was a centralized prototype. And uh, so if you want to kind of reach a global, uh, global use, you have to kind of design it in a way that, uh, uh, that of course, stands, stands the test of time. Well, hello, everybody. Is, uh, this is Gutimán de Ciocho. Um, I am from Mexico, um, and I am discovering the, this kind of environment here in Smart Bitcoin Cash. And also, I have used in everyday is the purchases, the Bitcoin Cash, right? So I think the best the best way to promote this ecosystem is by using it, right? So uh, every every project we have here is like very small. It's everyday people making their kind of of uh, entrepreneurial. Um, project right so if we if we start investing or using or promoting this kind of small projects maybe people will start discovering discovering these these projects but but the the influencer type of thing we were talking about here i think is more like a kind of general adoption that will not occur right now in Bitcoin Cash because th these fiat institutions don't want, they want to control everything. If you see OpenSea, they will put visa transactions in there. Also, uh, they are uh, making like a some symbiosis of these fiat instruments with a uh, blockchain instruments. So Bitcoin Cash, I think it is very pure. It is a pure project, very blockchain based, very peer to peer. I think uh, this pureness that we have here in Bitcoin Cash is something that other blockchains, other projects, other coins certainly don't have. So, and this is our strong, our strong state case, right? That we are common people, everyday people doing transactions, adopting the coin. As we see in the, ba in the Bahamas, uh, they have adopted Bitcoin Cash without being coercive with people. Uh, this was, talk this was uh, being talked, uh, I think, yesterday by Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban, that is a big fiat investor, now sees Bitcoin Cash as money. And U.S. Bank also. Yes, there are a lot of institutions that are adopting Bitcoin Cash Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. And that four crypt cryptos, I think they have a lot of potential as money. And as someone said here also, a smart Bitcoin cash, yeah, it don't have the infrastructure yet. If I have NFTs, what do I prefer? To put them on OpenSea or to put it in, in a website that is called it's the be.net, right? That's what we have here in smart Bitcoin cash right now. It is very, very green, the market. I think that uh, when the gains start reaching the people, these same people will start sharing these gains because humans are always based in greed and fear, right? That's how Bitcoin has worked in, their, in its own ecosystem. How Bitcoin grows so fast? Well, that, that was greed and fear. So we as big cash, as cashers, as Bitcoin cashers, we have to equally do the same thing, fear. So we as big cash, as cashers, as Bitcoin cashers, we have to equally do the same thing, promote this grid that in other environments like Ethereum is making the, the ecosystem work. 
uh, nonetheless, this ecosystem like Ethereum is so expensive. Why people are using Ethereum if it is so expensive? A smart Bitcoin Cash is so cheap, fast, and also relies in Bitcoin Cash as a unit of account. I, I think it's incredible. What do you think, everybody here? Have you used a smart Bitcoin Cash yet? A uh, smart bit. Smart Bitcoin, yeah, Smart BCH is is pretty fast. Um, you know, I want to underscore a few really good points that you made there, Gutman. Is that uh, you know, in in my case, uh, I employ two developers in Venezuela, and I they render a service. I pay them. It's the end of the story. There's no banks involved. There's no government involved. Everything's private. Um, it's that simple. And and in my mind, I think that. Bitcoin, the original Bitcoin uh, protocol, and now Bitcoin Cash, uh, our real strength here is self-sufficiency. It's a very simple mechanistic system. We have books like Mastering Bitcoin Cash that break down that, sim that simple system and explain it. And it's that simplicity and that self-sufficiency, the fact that any person can run all the infrastructure they need on a desktop computer uh, and be completely self-sufficient and sovereign from the government. Um, with their money and private. Uh, and so I, I would like to see us yeah, move away from chasing shiny objects. It's, it's great. Like all these NFTs and smart BCH and, uh, and Ethereum, and everything, uh, all, all the EVM stuff. It's good. It has a place. It's important. And if we were able to execute, well, we could bring a lot of new people in the space, but it's, it's coming in my mind, it's coming from a place of, of reaction. Uh, we're, we're reacting uh, and we're, we're sort of ch like chasing the NFT fad. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that we, sh you know, I have so much respect for Dash and their laser focus on peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, cash use case. And they absolutely refuse, you know, they disabled op returns because they don't want, as far as I'm aware, because um, they don't want um, to deal with the data use case. And that's a decision that Bitcoin Cash, we, we expanded the op return because we see that there's value uh, in, in having a little bit of data in the transactions. Um, and anyways, you know, the, the points that you made, Gudeman, is in terms of uh, that this is a clean implementation. I, I agree with that. Um, and I think that it would be a mistake for us to take our focus off of our strengths and spend that energy chasing shiny objects. Um, you know, in terms of uh, EVM compatible things, Smart BCH is great and it has a place, but I don't think we're ever going to catch up to Avalanche uh, in terms of their ability to efficiently execute EVM smart contracts. Um, you know, I feel like my, my personal opinion is I think Dash is definitely pulling ahead of us in the cash use case uh, in terms of just their ability to grow faster than us. And um, so I think I think we just need to identify our strengths, play to them, and uh, and and in my mind, our greatest strength is self sufficiency. That's that's a that's a trait that um, is global in nature that that everyone from every walk of life can appreciate, especially in places where uh, you know I focus a lot of outreach in South America, uh, you know, because those people uh, have routinely been let down by their government. And they see the value of, of a non-governmental self-sufficient money um, that's fully decentralized. Yeah, you had a point there with Dash, right? But I think that Dash is a, a corporation. I, th I think they, they have a CEO. Uh, Dash is certainly done, not decentralized. So Bitcoin Cash, the cash that we are looking for as a as a planet, as a global community, is a kind of money that is completely decentralized. That that is the reason that Bitcoin is gaining so much traction. The thing that they are not talking about yet is that a Lightning Network isn't Bitcoin, right? So this is one of the of the good rhetoric that Bitcoin cashers has to promote. We are promoting it is a while ago, right? But it is always good to remember this thing because lightning is not a blockchain at all so why they are selling it as bitcoin so uh, dash uh, it is a blockchain right is it a crypto but i think bitcoin cash what it is what it is also is a decentralized project 
<laughs> Indeed. I mean, Dash is a company coin. I mean, <laughs> don't even get me started on Dash. But, um, you know, I think that Bitcoin Cash is, is a system that's open to anyone, you know, and I think that that's, that's an important part of, of who we are as well. You know, sustainability, you know, it, what is it, independence? Yeah, but we can, we can scale to everyone. We can, you know, we have that. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot on this, like self-sufficiency. You got anybody who follows me in this space, you're going to help hear me talk a lot about that because I, I really think that this concept of self-sufficiency of like I run my own node on this own box, and I don't need to depend on anybody else in order to manage my money and my wealth and interact with other people on the network. I don't need to ask permission. Um, I think that that's our greatest strength. I, I think that that we that the space is not focused on that enough. And I plan to focus on that uh, extensively over the next few months. And I guess my argument was it doesn't need to be about NFTs in, in relation to getting creative in Bitcoin Cash. I just think that we need normal artists. It could be anyone and everyone. And it could be a very small competition that we run. Um, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Um so it should be open to everyone. It doesn't have to be about NFTs and tech. Just getting the brand out there more and circulating more. I, I just don't believe that we have enough artwork in any form. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. In the uh, BCH Marketing Group on Telegram, uh, t.me slash BCH Marketing, we're talking about that idea and we're also talking about... Um, uh, kind of a campaign to expand on uh, the excellent work that Club, Club B, uh, 1BCH has done so far, just in order to get more, um, you know, just like Sherry just said. Um, so, you know, I definitely want to invite everyone who's interested in this stuff to join that group. Uh, it's called BCH Marketing Free for All on Telegram. Um, and also in that group, there is uh, a pinned uh, post that has details on how to uh, submit like marketing tasks, you know, so that we can start building like um, just kind of a map uh, or some ideas about, you know, what, what needs to be done, you know, what, what, what are the next steps, you know, what, what needs to happen. And then people can take those tasks and, and do them. And then uh, we can turn that into something where, uh, you know, people can get tipped. And if the, the system works, maybe we can grow it, you know, and uh, we can turn that into something where, you know, people can, can earn some money and we can produce some real, uh, some real results uh, for Bitcoin Cash. So we're coming up on an hour. Uh, I just want to say so, thank you so much to the people who came out to speak today. Uh, Club 1BCH, Paul, Sherry, Crackers, Ben, um, Gutiman, uh, Eric, Purely Peer, Chris Troutner, and Jerry, thank you so much for your uh, technical contributions. Thanks to Ryan. And uh, special thanks to Gutiman because actually he uh, was the uh, impetus uh, for this uh, space. Um, because he, he had, uh, he was organizing one and then, uh, I just, I missed his message. And so I said, well, let's, let, let's give a push to Gutiman, you know, cause he's got a good idea here. Um, so, you know, in just in the last few minutes, you know, we have some, you know, some, some, you know, developers, BCH developers, thinkers, builders here. Um, does anybody have any questions, uh, that they want to ask? I guess my question would be, would it be meaningful to have uh, a meeting every so often where we schedule in, I don't know, once a month, the first day of every month or something like that where people who can make it can jump in and have a discussion? Yeah, I, I actually would agree. Like it a yeah, I, I think agree, agree but what I, I'm sorry. Yeah, crackers, please. I know I agree with Sherry there. I think we should. But what we should do is have it on YouTube as a live. If you don't have to have your camera on, just put a picture on or whatever. But have it up there and invite people who are in BCH to ask the questions while we're live. Get people interactive. To do it on a YouTube channel or so. 
yeah, to grow the community where people are interacting more rather than being out there on your own and then we can, you know, talk about ideas, fight about ideas, do whatever. And I guess my role in BCH has been more about community building, getting people talking, even though I might be doing more of that on Telegram. Um, I think it, it just works. I think, yeah, YouTube will be great because you can also record it and post it later so for whoever missed it can check it after. So I do have a uh, multi-way uh, real-time live streaming platform. Um, it's initially launched for uh, doing music con. Uh, real-time live streaming platform. Um, it's initially launched for uh, doing music concerts. If you go to biggestfan.live, you can see it. But we're just now adding a conferencing ability. And um, so, and it also can simulcast to YouTube. So I'm happy to host that if you all want. It's a little bit, it's oriented better to doing interactive stuff than what a YouTube one would be. Let's definitely give it a shot once it's ready. Absolutely. We've got to eat our own dog food. <laughs> uh, also for the, the technical people, I invite you to join our bi-weekly technical meetings uh, with the Permissionless Software Foundation. Like I said, we don't focus exclusively on Bitcoin Cash, but it does get a disproportionate amount of focus. And we are having a lot of talks around uh, Smart BCH. Uh, anybody who is aware of Stoyan, um, he is a, a monster uh, developer. It's, uh, and he blows our minds on a regular basis with all the cool things that he has figured out how to do on Smart BCH. And if you want to go to YouTube and Google Permissionless Software Foundation and find our videos, the last couple uh, technical meetings we've had, um, the last half of them has just been Stoyan blowing our minds. And so um, I would recommend everybody check that out and, and everyone's invited to join our meetings. Outstanding. Okay, well, I think we'll wrap it up here. We've crossed the hour mark. Uh, once again, thank you so much, everyone. This has been an outstanding conversation. And uh, definitely, I think we should, we should keep talking in the group and, you know, our other normal channels and keep doing this on a regular basis. So, hey, George, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I was just a little bit. Uh, Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, guys. I just want to let everyone know that um, uh, we, we at uh, Bitcoin Bay, we're hosting a, uh, a hackathon coming up uh, November 8th to the 18th. Um, and as part of it, we're actually going to be using... Uh, uh, SLP tokens to help distribute some of the prizes that Bitcoin Bay will be giving out. So if anyone wants to join, I'll be uh, posting uh, the the links on it onto Reddit and to, to Telegram very soon. So uh, just stay tuned. Outstanding. I would love to retweet that. And um, if anybody else you know has any plugs uh, for anything they're working on, uh, you can go right ahead. You can also send me that and I will retweet whatever you have. Okay, well, I think then we'll, uh, we'll close up for today. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, and let's keep building Bitcoin Cash. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having us. Thank Thanks you, George, for hosting. Thank you, Chris. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. You too.